take one. In this video, we're going to talk about making some ammonium sulfate NH42 SO4. Some info. It's an inorganic salt. It's first noted in the alchemic literature from the 1500s to the 14th century called Andreas Libavius. In the 1900s, it was found to be a byproduct from coke plants in the newer steelmaking processes. And now it's made synthetically as ammonia is produced through the era of the Haber-Bosch method, where the nitrogen comes from the air and the hydrogens are ripped off of methane. Today, most of the ammonium sulfate that's made is used as a fertilizer, but it's also proved as a food additive, especially as a dough conditioner. And I'm sure that means a lot to all of us. Ammonia sulfate is highly soluble in water, 77 grams per 100 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. At 100 degrees Celsius, which is basically boiling water, you can dissolve more than 100 grams of ammonium sulfate in the water. On its own, it is slightly hygroscopic, so you have to be careful because it will eventually melt in humid conditions as it absorbs more and more water. Historically, it was noted to be a flame retardant, and although it's certainly not the best one, it does work. And finally, there are two ways to make ammonium sulfate in a small lab. These are pretty straightforward. The first one is to mix ammonium carbonate and calcium sulfate, which of course is plaster of Paris. So you mix your ammonium carbonate with your calcium sulfate, gives you the ammonia sulfate and the calcium carbonate, which is insoluble and falls out of solution. The second way is to mix an ammonia solution with a sulfuric acid solution, and that's the method and why it's asterisk that I'm going to be using today. I'm even bothering to make this ammonium sulfate. You can certainly buy the fertilizer, but that often has uh, other ingredients that you have to filter out. In this case, we're making it pure, and I'm doing it for a future video where I'll be using the ammonium sulfate with cold packs and the can that's located inside of those cold packs. In our materials, first one we need is ammonia hydroxide solution. This is something you can buy over the counter. It is basically ammonia, but it's written in solution as NH4 plus OH minus because it takes one of the hydrogens and bonds it with the nitrogen here and leaves the hydroxide out here by itself. We need a two molar concentrated solution of that, and we're gonna make 500 milliliters of it. But a two molar in technical terms means two moles per liter. So we'll figure out what it is at two moles per liter and using a 10% solution, how to get that, and then we'll divide it in half to make the 500 milliliter solution. The second thing we need is a sulfuric acid solution. We need a one molar sulfuric acid solution, which again is one mole per liter. So we'll figure out how to do that and then divide it in half to come up with 500 milliliters. And the reason I'm doing 500 milliliters is to use a full liter for both of these means a lot of water in the end needs to be uh, dehydrated. But this way, we'll only have one liter total when we're done with everything, which is less water. But I still want to work out the molars just to show you how this works, where because of the equation here, we have two moles of the ammonia hydroxide solution plus one mole of sulfuric acid. We get our ammonium sulfate and two waters. So the equation shows us a two molar solution of ammonia hydroxide. And that's what we want, a two molar solution here, which is two moles per liter. And then one mole of the sulfuric acid solution. Of course, that's what we want here. So in theory and in technicality, I'm trying to make the solutions as they would turn out to be exactly in this equation. Now, you can use different amounts as long as you have two of the ammonia hydroxide solution and one of the sulfuric acid solution. But by standardization, the two means two moles per liter and one means one mole per liter. And so that's why I'm trying to focus on this, just trying to make the chemistry both uh, simple but also explainable. So in our methods here, we're going to make a two molar sodium hydroxide solution. We need two moles of that, two moles per liter. So to make a two molar sodium hydroxide solution, I'm using over-the-counter 10% ammonia solution that I purchased. We want to mix two, 340 milliliters of a 10% ammonia solution I have with 660 milliliters of water. And that will give us our two molar solution, which is two moles per liter. If you add up the 340 here and the 660 here, you get a thousand milliliters or one liter. But because I only want to do 500 milliliters of this because of all the water involved, I'm going to divide it by two. So we need 170 milliliters of the 10% sodium hydroxide solution. And we're going to mix that with 330 milliliters of water, both of which are half of what I just showed over here. Number two, we're going to make a one molar sulfuric acid solution. And I have 98% sulfuric acid. You know, if you have battery acid, which is around 33, 35% sulfuric acid solution, you can certainly do this also, just different calculations, of course. So to make our one molar sulfuric acid solution, I'm going to mix 56 milliliters of the 98% sulfuric acid with 944 milliliters of water. So if you had 56 and 944, you get 1,000 milliliters again. So this will give us our one molar solution, one mole per liter, or 1,000 milliliters. Again, if we divide it in two, we have 28 milliliters of our 90. 8% sulfuric acid solution, and we're going to mix that in 472 milliliters of water, and you always add the acid 
to the water when mixing these two. Next, we're going to add the one molar sulfuric acid solution we just made to the two molar sodium hydroxide solution very slowly. This is exothermic, and once they're mixed, we want to continue to mix them really well to make sure everything has reacted. One of the ways that you'll know that you've mixed the solutions well and that you made the solutions properly is that when you are done mixing these two together, the ammonia odor will disappear because the ammonia is now mixed in with the sulfate so it's no longer being released into the air and the smell will be neutral. The other thing that's important when mixing these two is you watch the pH. You want the pH slightly acidic. It turns out better in the end. So we're looking for a pH of around 5, 5.5, 5. 5, even 6. Somewhere in that range will be the perfect pH when we know the, we've mixed these well. So no odor and a slightly acidic pH is a good endpoint when these two have been well mixed. Once the mixing and the pH are done properly, we want to pour the solution into a wide mouth glass dish and heat it to crystallize it, basically removing the water. And there will be quite a bit, quite a bit of it to remove. But while we're heating this, we don't want to really go above 60 degrees Celsius because at 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, you start to drive off the ammonia gas, which is um, in solution. It's actually an ion. So you can actually get rid of too much ammonia if you heat this too quickly. And you don't want that because you have a good ratio mixed already. So we're going to keep it below 60 and that decreases our ammonia loss and that is slow. So it's gonna take a bit to get rid of all the water, which is even one more reason why I didn't wanna use a full liter here and a full liter there. Okay, we've got crystallization. We wanna scrape it out good and weigh it. The yield should be around 80 grams of ammonium sulfate. We'll see what we get when we're all done here, but that's all she wrote. I have no more whiteboard again, so let's go make some ammonia sulfate. 170 milliliters of a 10% sodium hydroxide solution I bought over the counter pre-measured to be mixed with the 330 milliliters of water pre-measured 28 milliliters of a 98% sulfuric acid solution pre-measured to be mixed with 472 milliliters of water pre-measured here's the 330 milliliters of water I'm going to turn on the magnetic stir and start to add our ammonia solution here this of course will make our two molar per liter solution that we're looking for All right, done turning off the magnetic stirrer. Mixed well enough there. Okay, ready to mix the sulfuric acid in the water here, turning on the stir bar and adding the sulfuric acid. You always add acid to water, no matter how much or how little. And I'm gonna do this in just small amounts. Done mixing our one mole per liter sulfuric acid solution, turning off the magnetic stir, and moving on. So I'm all set up to mix these two. I want to make it very clear though, I swapped the solutions because the sulfuric acid needs to be added to the ammonia hydroxide, although I mixed them differently. They are labeled properly now, I just want to make that clear. Because our endpoint will be a pH of around six, or six and a half, somewhere in there, I'm going to check the pHs before we start the ammonia hydroxide, which of course turned very dark because it's basic and the sulfuric acid it seems silly to check but we're going to do it anyways and you can see right here that it's red because it's acidic turning on the magnetic stir and again because this is exothermic i'll be doing this very slowly i've added about half of the sulfuric acid solution i'm going to check the ph now I really expect it to be pretty basic still, and sure that's what it looks like right here. Maybe it's lightened up a little bit to maybe a 13 from a 14, but uh, it's not changed very much. Once we add all of that sulfuric acid solution, just as a reminder again, we will overshoot the pH a little bit. We want to do that. I finished adding the sulfuric acid solution maybe about 10 minutes ago, but I wanted this, of course, to mix really well. And we should be right around a pH of 6 right now, maybe a little more acidic. I'm going to check here again. I was checking quite frequently there, but I think we're very, very close. And we are, I think, right on the money. A 5 or a 6, maybe a 5.5. And the other thing that you can notice is that the ammonia smell is gone. Now, there's no way for you to know that, but you can trust me that... I took a good whiff in there and there is no ammonia smell at all, which mean, means the ammonia hydroxide or the ammonia has been used up, which is a really good sign also. Turning off the magnetic stir. I'm pouring the one liter of ammonia sulfate solution that we have here into a two liter Pyrex dish. So it should all fit. That's what I'm counting on at least. Excellent. And turning the heat on high, 
monitoring the temperature closely and the heat and we'll do this until either we start seeing crystals form or the solution is getting so low that we'll uh, just test out uh, fridge or freezer to see if we can, can get crystals to form. We're about 25 minutes in here and uh, when I first turned this pan on uh, high there, uh, it heated up so quickly. I haven't used this pan in a while. It's obviously made for food, but I've used it in chemistry several times. And um, I got concerned it was heating up so fast that it was gonna put our solution uh, over the 60 degree mark uh, too quickly, or at all. We really don't want it to go above 60 degrees Celsius. So I just poured some water in there and you could see that kind of bubble around for quite a while there. It was interesting. But right now the solution's at 58 degrees. I have the temperature turned down, but um, yeah, we gotta evaporate some more water, just keeping the temperature lower. time to turn this off. I've been monitoring the temperature really closely. There's only just about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths of an inch of solution there. When you watch the time lapse, it'll probably be less than 15 seconds, but it's taken six hours to get to this point, keeping the temperature at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, pretty much pinned there. So I'm gonna let this cool down. We'll see if it crystallizes on its own. Maybe it will. Well, this certainly looks very different from what uh, you just saw when I was doing the time lapse. Uh, I thought it was done crystallizing, so I turned it off and was going to start scraping stuff out, and there was a layer of water under everything. I couldn't see at first, so I went ahead and heated it some more, and this is how it actually looks when it's completely dehydrated, so I didn't catch that last bit uh, on camera. But it is still a little bit warm. It was at, it's at 50, 60 degrees Celsius at the max at any one point, so I'm going to wait for it to cool down now. We'll scrape it out and then weigh it. Just want to show you from the side here the area that you couldn't really see from the camera where it was before all these crystals that had formed above the solution quite a bit above and uh, kind of formed those spiky protrusions and then it made it all the way up to the rim which is always interesting when the crystals form above the surface of the solution like this where this happened a lot with this ammonia sulfate okay let's break it up these crystals are looking pretty tough I cleaned this off the best I could. It's never perfect, but that's gonna to have to be good enough. Here's our ammonia sulfate, finally. And I would say to characterize it, it's a little bit like snow, actually. It felt like that scraping it off. And um, yeah, if you live in the South, sorry, I don't have a way to characterize it for you down there. Although the way the weather has been lately, I think many of you have had snow, so you know exactly what it's like. All right, regardless of all that, let's weigh it. Fifty-nine point five one grams. The theoretical yield was eighty grams. So let's do this real quick. Seventy-four point three nine percent. So almost seventy-five percent. Not too bad, I would say. I think um, that'll have to do. All right. 